All right. Here is the RC circuit lab, which is the resistance capacitance circuit. So here you have a resistance connected to a capacitor in series, and you give the input, which is going to be a square wave. This is the circuit that we use uh, for doing the lab. The circuit board has many resistances, as you can see, 10 ohms, 33 ohms, 100 ohms, and uh, 330 microfarad, and so on. All right, in the simulator circuit, I am actually using a 200 ohm in this lab, but if it was uh, in the physical lab, we would be using the 100 ohms with the 330 microfarad. And actually, you can see that the 100 ohms is connected through this coil. So that's a coil or a solenoid. Through the solenoid, it's connected to the capacitor. So the capacitor, the coil, and the resistance are already connected in series. But we do not want the coil. So what we will do is we will take a cable and connect it from here to this point. So when you connect that cable, the current will not flow through the coil. Instead, the current will flow through the resistance, through that short circuit, it will flow into the capacitor. So that means the input is going to be given between this point, which is one end of the capacitor, and this point, which is one end of the resistor. So that's where you will give the input. That's where we will give the square wave as the input. And then we are going to look at how the capacitor reacts to this voltage. So we actually want the voltage across the capacitor. So that means we will take the output from the ends of the capacitor. So we'll take the output from here, which is one end of the capacitor, and this point, which is the other end of the capacitor. So you see that this point is a common point between the input and output. So that will be the ground, or that will be the negative, okay? I'm gonna show you the circuit now. So here is the output that is shown, as explained. The output is taken between the ends of the capacitor. So the positive, which is the red cable, and then this is the negative, so that's connected. And those two cables are actually connected to a voltage sensor. This is the voltage sensor. So it senses the voltage, and this voltage sensor will be connected to the interface, as I'm going to show you in a bit. And of course, the interface is connected to the computer. And so on the computer, you will be able to get the voltage change across the capacitor, okay? But then we also have the input here. So here you have the complete circuit. You have the input and the output. So the input, <coughs> excuse me, so you can see uh, the Output is, that's the voltage sensor that we looked at before, that's connected to the interface, and then the input is taken from here, so again you see the negative, the negative of the input is connected to the same point where the negative of the voltage sensor was connected to. And the positive is connected to the other end of the resistor. Of course, you don't see the whole cable, but you can understand. So that point is the positive of the input. This is the negative of the input, as well as the negative of the output. And then this is the positive of the output. So you have two points for the input and two points for the output. And one of those points is common to both the input and the output. That is the ground or the negative. I hope that's very clear. Now, all that remains 
is to switch on the computer, use that software, and look at how the voltage fluctuates across the capacitor, which is what you would do in the lab. Now, since we're not able to do that, I'm using a simulator to set up the circuit, and the simulator has 200 ohms as the resistance, and you have a, a 330 microfarad capacitor, and we will see how the voltage fluctuates. Okay, and the, the aim of this experiment is to calculate the value of the capacitor. Oh, we're going to do that just in just a minute. Cut. So here are the actual cables that uh, you have connected. You see the short. So you take the coil out and this is the input. You see the negative and the positive of the input. And then you have the output that's connected to the voltage sensor. So that is what we have connected so far. Right. And now we're going to look at a simulator and uh, make the same connection, the resistance and the capacitance in series. Give it a square wave voltage and see what happens, okay? So here is the simulator circuit. You can see the square uh, two voltage, 400 millihertz, which is 0 0.4 hertz is the frequency. We're using a real small frequency. And then the value of the resistance is 200 ohms. The value of the capacitance is 330 microfarads. So that is the theoretical value of the capacitance, which we are trying to find. And then I, you, you can see that I have connected a voltage sensor where the voltage is actually changing. Okay, the voltage sensor there shows the voltage changing there. And uh, the maximum is 2.4 volt. And the minimum is, of course, negative 2.4. So it goes from negative 2.4 to uh, 2.4, actually. Okay. And then when I show you the oscillator uh, you see the waves that are produced in the oscillator there let me restart that and see okay that's where it, you get the waves you clearly see how it's charging and discharging you can also see the values of the voltage is changing the rms values of the voltage and the actual value on the right side changing so that is the graph that we get we can also Put up the meter readings, but uh, okay. Then let me just try to, yeah, there it is. So what we have actually, we've got to do is zoom in on this and you look at the charging part, zoom in on one of the charging parts. This is what we would do in the lab, really. So zoom in on the charging part there, which I'm doing now, zoom in. Right, a little bit more. So you actually see how the capacitor voltage is changing. And then move this and put it at uh, the value of zero and get the time for that. And then uh, you can see that the maximum is 2.4, little about 2.4. And then move this to half of that, which is 1.2. All right, so it doesn't actually go exactly to that when you zoom in. If you don't zoom in, then you can exactly get the value uh, of 1.2. So you see that at 1.2, the time has changed. Uh, do you see that? It's 438.836, and then it's uh, something else here, 438.801. You take the difference, you're going to get the time it takes for it to charge from zero to half of the maximum. Of course, the time that I'm going to give you will not, uh, the times will not be the same, but the difference should be the same if I had done it without zooming in. Like when you zoom in, the times become inaccurate. But I had to zoom in to show you what's happening and what part of the graph you use, okay? So I think, I hope that's clear. Now I'm gonna give you the, the times that I got. Here are the graphs uh, that we get or the values that we get from the graph, from the simulator. As you can see, the, the voltage is zero there, the voltage no, actually the voltage is 1.2 volts there. Here the voltage is zero. 
the voltage is zero and the time that you can see the time at which the voltage is zero is 31.289 seconds. 31.289 seconds, the voltage is zero. Okay, on the other hand, when we look at the time when the voltage becomes half of the maximum, we are taking the maximum to be 2.4 volts, uh, although the simulator shows 2.5, I saw that it's actually 2.4 volt. And the time for that, when the, the voltage now, you can see that the voltage has is, is gone up. See, early, this is the zero of the voltage. Now it's at almost half of the maximum. Remember, that's the maximum voltage. So this is the part where the capacitor voltage or charge is increasing. See how it's increasing? That is the part that we are studying. So now we see that for the voltage to become 1.2 volt, the time was 31.336 seconds. And again, the maximum voltage is 2.4. So if you take the difference between this time, 31.336 and 31.289, we will get the time that it takes for the voltage in the capacitor to go from zero volt to half of the maximum. All right, the maximum is 2.4, so half of maximum is 1.2. So we get that time, and that's all we need in this lab. The time it takes for the voltage on the capacitor to go from zero to half of the full voltage. Now that is called T half. And once you get that uh, time, uh, we can calculate the value of the capacitor. So here is how we calculate the value of the capacitance. I'm giving you the formula and I'm going to explain how we get to the value of the capacitance. So during charging, the charge at any instant on the capacitor plates Q is equal to QM multiplied by 1 minus E raised to minus T by tau. All right, we'll, I'll explain what tau is in a second. When, but remember, when T is zero, it's a completely uncharged capacitor, so Q is zero. And as time passes, the charge in the capacitor builds up, but it takes infinite time for the capacitor to become fully charged. So T is equal to infinite when Q is equal to QM. That's the nature of an exponential curve. So that's why we are going to the definition of half-life. Half-life is the time taken for the charge on the capacitor to become half of the full voltage or the full charge. I keep switching charge and voltage because they are proportional to each other. So when the charge on the capacitor becomes half of the maximum, the voltage also becomes half of the maximum. So that's why I'm interchanging those two. So that is the definition of half-life. Let me move this. Half-life is the time taken to charge two, half of the full charge or the full voltage. Well, that means Q is QM by 2, half of the maximum. So when you substitute that into this formula, you know Q by QM becomes equal to 1 minus E raised to minus T by tau. And then since we have defined Q by QM as 1 by 2, because Q is half of QM, you get that. And then when you rearrange it, uh, you're going to take this to the other side and you're going to get 1 minus half. 1 minus half is half, right? And so E raised to T by tau is 2. Because remember, I changed the negative into positive, so I flipped the side. So 1 by 2 became 2. So E raised to T by tau is 2. And then, you know, instead of putting E raised to on this side, we can put natural log on the right side. So we get T by tau is natural log of 2. And remember, the T that we are talking about is T half. It's, it's only, this formula is only true when the time is 
the time taken for the charge to become half. So I've put it as T half right here. I should have written it all over, but then it become really confusing. So I put T half is tau natural log two. And again, remember that the ratio of the charge is the same as the ratio of the voltage. So instead of uh, measuring the charge, we are actually measuring the voltage. It's okay because the ratios are the same. And from this formula, we can calculate the value of the capacitance. But you need to know that tau in this case is the product of the resistance and the capacitance. So tau is RC. So when you plug that in, you know, when you plug that in, you are going to get T, a tau is R times C. And when you rearrange, you're going to get tau as T half by natural log 2. Now T half, where did I get that from? Remember, the difference between those two timings gives 0 0.046 seconds. All right, 0 0.046 seconds is the difference between those two times. And then when you do that, you get 0 0.0664, but remember tau is R times C, and once we plug that in, uh, knowing the value of the resistance, we can calculate the value of the capacitance, which I'm going to do here, speed it up. So C comes out to be 0 0.0664 divided by resistance, which is 200. That gives 332 microfarad. Remember that micro is 10 to the negative 6. So I've already changed it to microfarad when you divide it. Of course, that's not what you get. Uh, you would get... 3 point, I think you get 332, no, you get 3.32 times 10 to the negative 4. That's what you get. But then I've changed it so I can put it as microfarad. This is how we calculate the value of the capacitance using a resistance capacitance circuit. Now, in these circumstances, I hope you have got a good grasp of how to do this lab, although you have not done it physically. I am sure you understood what what's going on. You understood how the connections are made and that's all that matters. So now what you need to do is go put this into the lab report, answer those questions, uh, you know, and then turn the lab report in by Saturday midnight. So this is your RC circuit lab. See you on the next video.